sharing. Now you've got them to the site, you've got them to do something, you've engaged them, they've, called to, they've been called to action, and now you want them to tell all their friends. So you put social sharing buttons on. On your websites, how many of you actually got social sharing buttons of any kind? Good, okay, uh, a, a large number, fantastic. Um, the other thing you can do is share yourself. So when you put a new article up on your webpage or you have a page on your website that you want to promote, actually sharing it out yourself, putting it up on Google Plus and so on, this is a good way of starting. It's the empty restaurant syndrome. People will walk down the street past five empty restaurants and queue to get into the sixth. And it's because they're looking for this social proof. And if you start promoting one thing, you know, you put one like on Facebook, maybe it will encourage the next person, the next person. They did an experiment in New York where they uh, had uh, a man staring into the sky. And after a while, they observed that three or four people gathered and stared into the sky. Okay, fine. And then they had five people staring into the sky. And after a short while, there were 30 people had joined them, they were all staring. Then they started with 30 people, and hundreds of people were staring into the sky. In other words, people will do what they see other people do. Um, there's also some very useful tools you can use for doing this. This is if this, then that. So when I post something on Facebook, put a copy in Evernote. When I post something, or post something on WordPress, ping it out to Facebook. There are hundreds of recipes. You can automate the whole of this social posting so that you just write something once on Twitter and it just replicates through the whole social media uh, world without any further interaction. The other way of doing that, we use um, this tool, which is called Buffer App. And you can create a whole series of tweets and Facebook posts and LinkedIn stuff, and it will just schedule them periodically through the week. So you, know, you don't have to sit there and every 10 minutes or every half, couple of hours send out a tweet. You can actually sort of sit down and write, I am doing all my tweets for the week, because you know, tweeting is business now, tweeting is marketing. And it will stack them up and issue them for you over time. So you can, you can use that. YouTube is a surprisingly popular way of doing social media. Uh, this is my crazy video. Uh, Yas and Jared filmed it. This one and about 12 others in total had 300,000 views. And you know, I did the first eight of those on my own. So I, you know, the, these guys are professionals, but I was doing it sort of completely amateurish to camera. And we had a video on some product that did 100,000 views. If you've got a business and you can put, uh, make a little video out of it and find a, an audience for it and it's interesting and worthwhile and something people want to watch, actually that can be a lot better than writing something on a web page. The thing, on, certainly on YouTube, what worked for us was we were using product names and the re word review and unboxing. So people were finding that on Google. So they were typing HP 5330M unboxing review and finding us. But once people had started watching it, they started clicking on the like button, they started sharing it with their friends, and it sort of became not a viral video in the sort of Gangnam sense, goodness help me, no. But um, it for people who were interested in that, it sort of started coming at the top of search results and things. If you create something that is uh, genuinely interesting, even for the smallest subset of, of, of the audience on the internet, and it's authentic and relevant and interesting, there will be an audience for it. Um, it's, it's, it is astonishing how quickly uh, uh, good content will find its, its, its audience. And, in, and Google and Bing, to a lesser extent, kind of take you a long way along for that. Um, and some of these other techniques that I've been talking about will help. Um, but you know, for Golf Hotel Whiskey, which is my blog about flying, we went from zero to 10,000 visitors a month in less than a year. Um, 10,000 is a blog about flying uh, for pilots, and there are probably only about 12,000 pilots in the UK. So you know, we got quite a big audience share quite quickly just by writing stuff that they were interested in. And that's you know, super niche niche audience. Um, how do you get them to come back? Build an email list. We use this sign-up form on bad language. This is a more elaborate sign-up form with some information about what you're getting, a sort of a, a call to action with benefits and a little bit of anti-objection text. And we use a thing called MailChimp to build that list. Mail lists, emails, is the most valuable way I've found. It's the most manageable way. It's the most predictable way of getting people to come back. If they come to your site and find something that they find interesting, and they sign up for the newsletter, you can keep sending them more updates and more news. And if it's interesting, relevant, useful, valuable, remarkable content, they're not going to unsubscribe. 
Um, successful emails, keep it short. Typically, on our emails, we find the first few links at the top of the page get the most visitors, and as you go down, 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 down the page, it drops off. And in fact, every email I send is getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. I think in the end, we're going to end up with almost a one-paragraph email, and I think that's sort of respectful of people's time. Personalized emails, i.e. emails with people's names in, increase click-through rates by 14% and conversion rates by 10%. Um, relevant emails, meaning emails that are some, somebody is kind of cued off what people are looking at on your website, generate uh, 18 times more revenue than spammed out broadcast emails. So that targeting the email, trying to understand why people are looking at it, tying it back into personas can be very, very effective at making email marketing work for you. Set some targets for yourself. Not so much on the results you're going to get because I can't, you know, it's often hard to say how many visitors you're going to get to or what audience share you might get. But you can measure and target how many articles I'm going to write, how many pages I'm going to review this month, uh, how many tweets I'm going to send out. Non-existent copy is free. I think one of the big problems when people have with a website when they're designing one or thinking about one, they want lots of pages. I want a page for this, I want a page for that. This, it, Brevin Howard, is Europe's largest hedge fund. These people have got more money than God. And that is their entire website. That's all it is. There's nothing else there. There's no, web, there's no more pages. They haven't got an About Us page. They haven't got a Find Us on the Map page. It's just that. Now, OK, if you're them, you can get away with it. And actually, by putting copy on a website, they probably create hostages to legal fortune. But here is another website. They're selling coffee. So they, these, these people aren't sort of financial titans who've brought us to bankruptcy. They are just selling coffee. There are four links on that page and a glorious picture. And when you click on those, it goes to maybe a couple of levels deep down in the, in the thing, uh, in the hierarchy, and at most you have a paragraph of text on a page. It probably is four or 5,000 words of copy across the whole website, if that. It's a lot easier to write 4,000 words than 40,000 words. And here is another example of less being more. 50, 60 links, five, six links. Which one of these two companies has the highest uh, market share? Which one of these two companies is worth more? Yeah? Um, and I think increasingly, a one page or a five page site, a really simple site like this, this is, you could come to Basecamp and you could just sign up. You could go on the back of that. Maybe someone's told you this is a fantastic uh, uh, project management tool. You've got the social proof. There is a real person telling you, it tells you what it is. There's some more social proof. There's some pricing up there, but free trial, I'm, I'm sold. For them, that's a fantastic conversion, right? I mean, they've done almost nothing. There is a lot more pages on that website, but they're increasingly pushing this stuff up to the front. And here is the most extreme example I could find. There are four buttons on this page. It's almost impossible to get to the rest of the website. If you actually want to see it, you have the only way out is to click on $150 a month, and then you get into a more conventional website. There is almost nothing here. This is optimized, optimized. And these guys specialize in uh, optimization and user tracking. So they've tested this and tested this and tested this. So here are 10 tasks for you to do tomorrow with a view to improving the copy, improving the findability, the conversion on your website. Um, I am happy to take questions. And I'll put this, leave this up for a few minutes. And then I'll put the uh, links and addresses at the end, OK? Um, please have another drink. Have several. I'm going to have a few. Um, make yourself at home, and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Thank you very much.